Bunker, your one-stop shop for Bee Bender related videos, and it's Bee Bender Oktoberfest time here in the bunker. You know, I've been working on this lesson most of the week, trying to get it ready to film, but I just didn't have a theme, and it finally came to me today, as so many great ideas do, in the fancy beer store on aisle four. I was marveling at all the latest Oktoberfest releases, picking out a few of my favorite, and it came to me, what better way to celebrate the oncoming of fall than with a couple of my favorite things in the world, Bee Bender guitar and beer, as longtime viewers will well know. So that's the theme we're going with. It's as good as any, and it involves beer, so I'm on board. And so we're going to go over some uh, hot bender action like you heard there in the beginning. It's in the key of A. And strangely enough, as you, as you saw, I'm kind of working around an A bar chord. Now, usually when you're, you're this section of the neck, you're in D for the bender land. But I'm kind of trying to work around if we were playing an A bar chord. And I did a little bit of chicken picking at the beginning. That's not really part of the lesson. That's just me warming up. What I do when it gets time for the bender... It's like a sleight of hand magician. Mr. Pick goes away, I tuck it away, and then I'm using basically my thumb and my forefingers because I want to get two notes together right out of the gates on this bender passage in A. And so I'm, I'm putting a, one finger anchored on the four string and I'm hitting the, the B string open for the bender, and that's how we're getting that opening sound. I'm sliding on the four string and I'm also bringing up the uh, B string at the same time open. On today now again like I said it's mostly working out of primarily the bar chord area of A then we pop up here for what is always available to bender players that's the seventh shape for your A and we're finishing strong up here at the very top end of the what I call the high octave bender box for A So, if you're on board, that sounds good to you. Go grab your Bender guitar. Go grab the Oktoberfest beer of your choice. And let's have some fun. Right here at the Bender Bunker, it's Oktoberfest goodness. <laughs> Hey, you're still with me. Nice to have you on board for October B Bender Fest here in the bunker. And uh, before we get rolling here and get into the meat of the matter, just a quick bit of YouTube housekeeping, bear with me. As I mentioned, this inspiration, as it so often does, came from aisle four of the beer store this morning, and I'm looking forward to drinking these tasty Oktoberfest beers right after this lesson. But it's important to note, these beers, as so many of them are, are purchased with donations from viewers just like you. And the newer viewers here to the bunker may not realize that the Binder Bunker has its own PayPal account. That is available to you in the show more section below this video where we list all of our equipment our instagram channel it's all down there but there's a paypal link to the bender bunker where you can make a virtual beer donation and as promised from the very beginning i do spend all that money on beer so thank you to all that have donated over the last couple of years a little trivia on that when you donate and i receive that through paypal i always send you an email a thank you email and if you didn't receive your thank you email it might be due to the fact that the only email address i have available to me is the one that comes over with your PayPal donation. So if you didn't get your email, log into your PayPal account, see what email address you put in there because you may have done that years ago. That's the address I'm using. Maybe you'll see your email that way. But again, I wanna make sure that everyone that has donated definitely gets a thank you from the Bender Bunker because it is very much appreciated. If you'd like to support the channel in a non-monetary way, and that's great, completely understand that and appreciate it, go ahead and give us a thumbs up while you're thinking about it right there. Yep, use the mouse, there you go. That helps us uh, keep the channel growing. And again, it's very much appreciated. And finally, if you're new, if you're new to the bunker, you're, you're like, what is this? I'm not quite sure what this is all about. Well, it's not that complex. It is very much about hot bee bender action and some beer. I think that sums it up. And if you'd like to subscribe while you're thinking about it, we have conveniently located a subscri subscribe link for you right there. Am I touching it? I think I'm touching it. There we go. So uh, that's it. That's my housekeeping. Let's get into the meat of the matter. <laughs> our opening riff we are going to divide and conquer and we're starting with that one now as i mentioned in the opening i'm going with just my thumb and my index finger on this because i want to hit this opening sequence together i'm sliding in on the four string with my ring finger and ending up on the seventh fret on the four string and i'm hitting the open b string at the same time and taking the bender up as i do that so it's sliding in bender's going up on an open b string so get that down real quick as you take that bender up, leave it there for a second, okay? I'm going to use my index finger to go high E open, B string open, but with the bender bent. Now, 
I'm dropping my index finger on the B string fifth, and once I get it there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the B string fifth next to take the bender down, but I'm also using my thumb to also hit that fourth string on the seventh that I never moved my ring finger from. So again, that's another two note double stop to bring the bender down. So this is what we just learned. Now we're going to repeat that pattern, but this time we're not sliding into it and we're not hitting the fourth string and the second string together like we did at the opening of what we just learned. I am going back and using my thumb to hit the, the fourth string seventh with my ring finger, just one note, and then I'm quickly going over with my index finger to do the B string and take up the bender, but I'm not doing them together. This time they're staggered. I'll do it together so you can hear what I'm talking about. Right now they're staggered. Same thing, now I've got the bender up, do exactly what you did before, open high E, open B, then drop your index finger down on the fifth string, B string, and then hit the B string and the fourth string together as you take the bender down. That's what you did before. All right, get that smooth. Up and down motion with the bender, kind of gentle. The bender's down now, and I've got the B string and the four string ringing together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the audio that's still ringing on the B string with my index finger there on the fifth to allow me to slide up so that, that you'll hear it. I'll slide up while it's still ringing on the B string to my target area of the eighth. Because what I'm doing is I'm getting up to that seventh shape that we talked about at the opening. Top three strings are a seventh shape. And that's your index finger on the, you know, the B string eighth. So what I'm doing is I come down in the B string index finger on the fifth. I'm sliding it up and as I slide up, I'm taking the bender with it so that by, by the time I get there to the eighth fret, the bender's fully engaged. Now the bender's fully engaged, we're going to work out our seventh shape. So we just did the B string eighth, so now we're going to go with our ring finger for a note on the high E ninth. Come back to the B string that's still held there on the eighth with the bender engaged. Go back to the high E, but this time take your finger off, do it open. Now go back to the B string eighth, let this time pick it and let the bender down. And then with your middle finger, go over to the third string ninth to complete that seventh shape for a note. All right, all together for context. seventh shape and what we've got ringing now is the high E open B string eighth and G string ninth right fenders down and then I'm finishing the sequence by dropping my hand down here because I want to do the third string second fret a note with my index finger and as I drop down the neck I'm starting with the high E open as I hit the high E open, that gives me just enough time to pre-engage the bender because the next thing I'm going to do is hit the B string open and let the bender down. So I'm coming off the bender's down, sliding down to get down to that A note on the third string, high E open, B, B, bender's engaged, then I hit the open B to let the bender, then I finish on that third string second note, A note. sequence get it nice and smooth and then we're gonna go up and do it again put some slight variations in it up here at the top of our bender box that's next all right so we just came out of the main sequence and did the and they're right there on the A note third string second fret now I do that purposely that A note so that I make sure my hand stays below the target area and I make sure it forces me to slide back in like I did at the opening on it because the sliding to the four string seventh with my ring finger is such a vital part of that opening riff 
along with, of course, hitting the open B string at the same time and taking the bender up. And I'm worried if I take the A note right there that I'm already anchored on, I might forget to slide. So I think that's why I'm making my hand go down there. So we just did the... So now we're going to do the riff we've already learned. So again, I just slid up four string seventh, B string open with the bender. IE. IB still bent, drop my index finger to the fifth, and then hit the second four string together to let it down. You already know that. Now I'm going to do that again, four string, B string open. Except this time I'm not doing high E open B like that. I'm going to take my index finger for a slight variation. I'm going to cover the top two on the fifth. Now I'm going to go high E, B string to let it down, but with the top two covered with my index finger on the fifth. So the first part's what you know. variation adds a little fun to the mix and when I do that variation with the top two and the fifth I tend to let the bender down a little bit more abruptly I've been kind of slow and lazy on purpose with the bender to kind of give it that sound this time I'm being a little more abrupt with it when I do the top two on the fifth Bender's down now and we've achieved the same thing we achieved last time we did this riff, which is our index fingers on the B string fifth. It's still ringing because we need that to slide up like we did before to the B string on the eighth to get in position for our seventh shape. We're going to utilize most of what we've already learned on the seventh shape, not all of it, because this is what we're going to do. That's about all you got left. So we just learned the slight variation. Fingers down. Again, we're letting that ringing B string on the fifth give us just enough audio to slide up to the eighth while taking the bender fully engaged along with it. All right. That's exactly what we learned before. Now we're going to do kind of what we did before. The first part's what you know. You go up to the high E ninth through ring for note. Then you come back to the still bent B on the eighth. High E open. Now the B down. And this is the tricky part, and I kind of I need to do it fast here to show you what I mean. And that's what we're shooting for. What I'm doing there is that okay, I slid into the B string eighth, right? Bender's engaged. High E ninth. Back to the still bent B on the eighth. I open. Now I'm going back to the B on the eighth to let the bender down. About the time the bender comes all the way down, I'm dropping, this is kind of a quick motion, my middle finger onto the B string ninth right above it, and I'm sliding up. The bender's come down now. I'm sliding up with that middle finger on the B string to the target of the twelfth on the B string. And I'm doing what I did with the B string going from the fifth to the eighth. I'm using the audio of my middle finger hitting the ninth real quick to give me just enough to get that slide with the bender engaged again up to the twelfth. Right, so now I've slid up there, bender's fully engaged by the time I get there. Okay, now I've got that. I've got my middle finger B string twelfth. I'm going to go and take my ring finger on the high E twelfth for a note. So now I've got them both covered. The both top two strings on the 12th are covered. I start with one note on the high E 12th. Now they've got both fingers down. I'm going to hit them both together. That's going to also allow me to take the bender down. So I go up like this. Two together to let the bender down. And then on the B string, I drop down. I let my middle finger up and I drop my index down to the 10th on the B. I keep my ring finger on the high E 12th to make those two notes. That's it. You learned the Oktoberfest B Bender lesson here to welcome fall. And again, I can think of no better way than a little B Bender guitar and some Oktoberfest beer. 
to celebrate the, uh, the oncoming of fall, but you can really feel it in the air here in Central Texas. Uh, a lovely, crisp 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Our first weekend ahead of us where it may not be in the 90s. You can really feel fall just around the corner. Let's hope it gets here a little bit quicker. All right, I'm going to play it with the backing track. Get us on out of here. Again, I appreciate you spending this time with me. And uh, I'm going to leave as I always do with our motto. It is never too late to go on a bender, and I certainly hope you do as you welcome fall in here. Enjoy yourself a couple of these Oktoberfest beers. I know I'm going to do it right after this. And again, thank you to everyone that's donated to the channels to make these October beers possible. All right, I will see you next time. I bet you can guess what I'm about to say now. Until next time, do me a favor, keep it bent.